Hi, and welcome to The Magic of Giving. Central Florida is well known for the magic of its famous theme parks and attractions, but there's another kind of magic here, a magic that touches the lives of residents in need of assistance. That magic is spread by people who dedicate their lives and their calling to helping others. They work for Central Florida's nonprofit organizations, and that's what this show is all about. In each episode, we will feature one of Central Florida's nonprofit organizations and reveal the magic they share as they change the lives of those that are less fortunate. Hi, I'm Christina Santiago. Welcome to The Magic of Giving. Today's show features Heart of Florida United Way. The United Way has been a force for social change for the Central Florida community for over 30 years. It's a leader in bringing together the people who can create positive change for those in need. Joining me is Joe Nelson, Senior Vice President of Community Investment, and Ray Larson, Vice President of Collective Impact at the heart of Florida United Way. Thank you both so much for being with us thank today. You. Well, thank you for having us. So when and how was the United Way of Central Florida started? Actually, our history uh, mirrors the history of a lot of United Ways. Uh, in that we were uh, formed in 1939, and if you'll notice, we're wearing our, our anniversary pin. We're in our 75th anniversary year. And in 1939, Mayor Bob Carr at the time formed uh, what was called Community Chest. And that really is a way a lot of United Ways started as Community Chess. And the idea behind that was to have sort of an umbrella organization that would gather volunteers and raise funds to support social services. So in that first year, they gathered 400 individuals and they raised $40,000. What is the mission of the United Way? What is your mission? It's actually a simple mission, and that is to improve lives by mobilizing the caring power of the community. So we do that and we address sort of four basic areas. One of those is education, and uh, we work on our committee we call Building Safe Communities Through Education. Another is income, and we, we talk about that as improving financial stability for families and individuals. Another area is health, and we look at that as in terms of developing healthy children and families. Um, but also, we're very aware of addressing the most vulnerable in our community. So our fourth area is alleviating hunger and homelessness, where we look at issues around basic needs. Okay, and along that note, who do you serve in the Central Florida community? Everybody? Well, yeah, we do. And, you know, last year, Christina, over 400,000 members of our community were served. And many of them are, are vulnerable citizens, people that are dealing with homeless and hunger issues or unemployment or, or crisis situations. In fact, um, over 190,000 uh, received services through um, our 211 crisis and information referral line. About 92,000 of them were citizens of Orange County, in fact. A lot of times people don't recognize, though, that United Way serves many others as well. We help the adult who wants to learn how to read. Um, we help uh, with our uh, partners keeping kids safe after school and giving them a, a you know, enhanced learning environment. So uh, we serve many different, uh, uh, certainly vulnerable, but also work to promote the success of our citizens in the community as well. Yeah, and if I can add to that, um, of course, I think a lot of people are familiar with our annual giving campaign, our workplace giving campaign, and I certainly want to give a shout out to the Central Florida community for how generous they are in supporting that work. Those funds help us support programs that we fund in the community. Last year, we funded 70, 70 programs that, again, addressed issues under the areas that Ray was mentioning. Um, but in addition, we have a lot of in-house uh, initiatives that we do, like the 211 Information and Call Center. Um, but uh, again, through the generosity of the community, we uh, raised $18.3 million last year, and we're in the middle of our campaign this year, and we always have a stretch goal uh, for, for the community to, to help us increase the funds that can support these programs. Yeah, so 
let's talk about goals a little bit. I mean, um, in moving forward, um, what is your goal for, you know, this year? Will you meet your goal in moving forward? What are your goals for the next three to five years? Yeah, well, you know, um, certainly we want to keep intact that safety net that we've talked about. And, um, you know, uh, uh, one thing that we're aware of, for instance, with 211, we've talked about 211, is we're receiving about 200 um, uh, suicide calls uh, a month. So helping people to, to figure out, you know, how to get past that and, and get the services they need. But, you know, I'd also want to share with you that we're very focused, you know, Joan talked about uh, the areas of education, income, and health, and we have goals in those areas. So for instance, in education, we're really looking to promote the success of students from cradle to career. So we've identified what are those key milestones that kids have to meet to be successful? I guess if I was going to try to put it in a bumper sticker, our real goal is that any child that comes to live in our community or is born in our community and lives in our neighborhoods and goes to our schools, that when they're finished, they come out as adults that are ready for the 21st century workforce, are able to be productive citizens in our community, take care of themselves and take care of their families. So we want to make sure they're ready to learn when they enter kindergarten, that they can read in the third grade. You know, we've had a lot of focus lately on how do we help um, young people transition from certainly graduating from high school, but you know, Graduating from high school is not going to be enough in the future, and, and, and kids are going to need a credential or, or degree to be part of our workforce. So how do we help them transition, and particularly how do we help kids, maybe the first in their families to ever go to college, or maybe coming from a, a low-income family that nobody's done that before. How do we overcome those barriers to help them to have those post-secondary experiences as well? That's fabulous. And as we look at the cradle-to-career continuum and all of the the, the kinds of supports that, that the families need. Um, one of the things, one of the internal programs that we promote this time of year has to do with encouraging folks to take advantage of uh, free tax preparation. We actually have a financial stability coalition uh, and it's one of our roles to convene partners in the community that are working on like issues and our, our financial stability coalition has over 40 partners and we're now this time of year coming together to get the word out that we have uh, through a partnership with IRS and AARP over 40 free tax preparation sites that will be available after the first of the year that folks can go to and the advantage for that is that if they uh, qualify for earned income tax credit um, and they get assistance in filing for that they will get a return that uh, they might not they might just leave on the table and uh, this program the earned income tax credit program has been uh, claimed to be one of the biggest programs to lift families out of poverty so it's another way that the uh, your United Way our United Way is working in the community to support families that's wonderful so um, just real quickly before we go leave the segment can you just tell how people can get involved in that Initiative. Very easy. They can call 211, which actually you can call 211 to, to receive help and to give help to find out information about the, the, the uh, tax preparation sites. We're preparing pamphlets. We'll be sending out uh, statement stuffers. We partner with our utility friends and with other organizations in, in the counties and, uh, to get the message out about the, uh, the EITC program um, and also our website. You can simply go to our website and get information. Okay. And Christina, you know, we, we use the slogan, give, advocate, and volunteer. So it's not just, the United Way is just not a place to receive help, but it's also a place to offer help. So certainly by contacting through 211 or, or calling the United Way or, or, or connecting with us other ways, there's, there's other ways that others can help support our community as we go forward. Okay. All right. Well, thank you both. And, and I do want to talk more about the 211 program, but we'll talk about that later. And thank you guys so much for being with us today. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having us. Now that we know the background and goals of Heart of Florida United Way, we're going to take a short break, and in segment two, we'll discover their programs and services. Stay tuned, we'll return in a minute. 